everybody. This is Robin Norgren, and I'm your host for Montessori Creativity and the Meaning of Life. You are in the middle of an, a series with me titled Musings from a Modern Day Monk. Uh, the monk's name is Jeremy Driscoll, and these are essays in his book, The Monk's Alphabet. And we are going through A through Z, and I'm picking out selected um, essays for us to, to consider and ponder for the day. So we're in letter C. City and Country. Today in the monastic choir, singing along in one of the psalms about Jerusalem being restored, there flashed through my mind a strong visual image of the actual city as it is today. With Father Conrad singing next to me in choir, who loves Jerusalem so much and lived there for a number of years, I thought what a privilege it is to live today in some great city. Jerusalem, Rome, Barcelona, New York, San Francisco. That has entered, that has exerted and continues to exert some strong influence on history and culture. To live in such a city, even as just one of millions, is to be a part of something grand. Then I wondered if I am living anything less grand out here in the country where I am. And I think not. Yet there is probably no need to contrast country with city and to imagine one is better than the other. Today I'm letting the life of the city, how glorious it is to be a part of it, be a guide for me in discovering something important, something historical and cultural, about being a citizen of a particular piece of country. It is perhaps less obvious, but rather, but there is a grandeur waiting to be discovered in my living in this portion of the valley, in this particular season of the year. A grandeur comparable in scope and importance to the grandeur of being a part of Jerusalem or Rome or one of the other greats. Jerusalem can be a guide, indeed God so intended it, to living in any city on earth and in any piece of country. I have sung of this often out here in the country in another psalm. Of Zion we shall see, one and all were born in her. People shall be enrolled, saying, this one was born in her. All sing and dance, saying, All my origins are in you. Psalm 87, 5 through 7. C is for clumsy. All my longing, all my restlessness, my worry, my sense of failure. Perhaps all this is just my clumsiness at finding myself in contact with the divine and eternal realities in which I am immersed. I mean, God. I am immersed in God through the finite forms he has created and placed among us as a means for touching his infinite form. Of course, one is all mixed up at first. C is for connections. Passing full and near perfect days in an Oregon summer has a strange effect of etching more clearly in my memory and mind certain scenes from Europe. I am in the valley, not even at the coast, but somehow now I have a splendid set of visual memories of walks along the shore of the Adriatic in a festive explosion of a unique quality of light. And then I remember drives from there in the country hills with the setting sun. Or I am thinking of scenes of Barcelona, its long and noble streets, its abundance of trees cooling us in the summer heat and the late nights. Or the neighborhood of Prachi in Rome on a hot summer evening on my way to Lewis and Kate's house. There is a place in the orchard here that makes me think of Poland, and not of an orchard in Poland, but of a street in Krakow. I don't see the connection, but in the orchard, I think this street. 
I also remember terrace banks of olive trees outside of Florence many years ago at the house of Donatella, my Italian teacher, or Mount St. Victoire in Provence during a summer there, and pictures by Cezanne. One world, my one life, mysterious waiting to be understood connections. C's for contemporaries. We think of our families and relatives. We think of our nation and race. We regard the, the geographical unit in which we live. We identify with others of our same faith. In all these ways, we find the bonds that establish us in relation to others. Not everyone is included. We need a set of relations. We cannot be connected evenly to one and all. But there is another kinship that we tend perhaps too much, too much to overlook. I mean the tie with my contemporaries. All the people who are alive now while I am alive. And this across different countries and any culture. Reflecting on this, I find a kinship strangely strong. The thought inspires a tenderness in me for all others who are alive now in the same period of human time in which I too have appeared. It reveals a potential relationship and bond with anyone at all who is alive while I am, from whatever land or whatever culture. No matter the differences in personal cultures or personal stories, there will always be this wonderful possibility of real meeting and real kinship simply in virtue of our being alive at the same time. Everybody else is on a schedule different from mine, but our times overlap. Older people are still alive and can relate to me. They're junior. And I am able to meet any of those who got started after me, and we can have real points of contact. The world moves along in this way. The web is immense. My contemporaries, my relatives, we move together for a brief while through the span of life that is given us. Well, I'm hoping that you're enjoying these essays, and I hope that this offers an opportunity for you to sit and reflect. Make sure and share this with a friend or someone you think might be encouraged by this kind of conversation. Find all the work that I do on www.robinnorgren.com. Thanks so much for stopping by.